About 13 years ago, a man by the name of Jason Lyle Black went on the Ellen DeGeneres show back when people thought she was cool. I'm sorry for the realness. And the reason that he went on that show is because he could play the piano backwards. There was also a professor at my music college who was also able to play the piano backwards and he didn't make it look too difficult either. So I thought, let's see if I can learn how to do it. You know, I've spent many years learning the piano forwards. How hard could it be? It can't really be that hard to play the piano backwards. Oh, how wrong I was. And this video turned out to be one of the most traumatic videos I've attempted to make. Honestly, I only thought this would take one session of practice, but the first thing I needed to do was pick a piece of music to try and play, and I chose Fur Elise by Beethoven, because it's not so difficult that I would struggle to play it forward, but it also wasn't so easy that it wouldn't be impressive to be able to play it backwards. So once I'd picked the piece, the first part of the practice session I wanted to spend trying to memorise it playing it forward. The reason for this is because I know that when I'm facing away from the piano, one, I'm not going to be able to see my hands, but also it's going to be very difficult to read the music and have any idea what's going on because the right hand will be playing the left hand and the left hand will be playing the right hand. So reading the music is probably just going to make it more confusing. Now, fortunately, because it's for Elise, I do kind of know this piece already, but I've never played it or performed it for anything in particular, which means I've never actually sat at the piano and spent any time practicing this piece, especially the middle section of the piece, which I've never really had to learn before. I know that playing the piece facing the piano is not going to help me in any way be able to play it facing away from the piano because it'll be different hands playing the part. But if I at least know it by memory enough that when I'm facing away from the piano, I can picture the keys and know which keys I'm supposed to be pressing, then that can only help. I also wasn't sure how much of the piece to learn or how much would be manageable to try and play backwards. But at this point, I was assuming with enough practice, I'd probably be able to learn quite a bit of it. So once I'd spent some time learning it forwards, I then made my first attempt at playing it backwards. And the first thing that I realised is it's actually really difficult for me to get my arms to go backwards. I don't know whether that's because my back is so massive and muscular and hench, which it is, or whether humans are just not designed to be able to put their arms backwards. So my immediate thought was that I probably should have picked a piece where the hands are supposed to be further apart. And I also realised that I'm going to have to change to a normal piano stool if I'm going to be able to do this, because obviously a chair with a back is going to get in the way. So I quickly changed to the nearby drum stool to see if that was any better. And the answer was no, it wasn't. Because it's quite easy to put your hands behind your back close together if they're low down but it's hard to put your hands higher up close together i was just struggling to sit high enough so that my arms could rest on the keys comfortably and that's largely due to the fact that i normally have the piano much higher up for these videos so that the keys can stay in shot and so that you can see them that is so considerate so I was trying to find a way of sitting at the piano much higher than you would ever normally need to. But fortunately, I had a piano bench that could go much higher and that didn't have a back on it. And after maxing out the height on that stool, I still ended up having to lower the piano as well. So the keys go lower. Keys lower. Keys lower. So having found somewhere to sit where it was at least possible to play the instrument, I then tried to practice the piece. And my back and arms were just aching after every time I played the piece. And it still sounded terrible. So after two hours of practicing like this, I decided to leave it for the day and go and see if there was anything that Jason Lyle Black was doing that I wasn't doing. And when looking at pictures of him playing the piano backwards, he has his arms very straight and he's got his back very straight, leaning slightly forward. And I wondered whether that was the issue because I was playing with my arms kind of bent and I was leaning further and further forward in order to stop my back and arms aching. I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You broke my back, back is broken. What, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. But I wondered if it was just as simple as changing my posture in order to make it more comfortable for my arms to reach behind me. And with that new insight hopefully going to be the thing that makes the difference, I went into session number two.
we're back for session number two. And obviously the first thing that I tried to do was play with straight arms and a straight back leaning slightly forward. And did that help? Am I now going to play the piece perfectly backwards? Nope. If anything, that actually made it a lot worse. Looking at Jason, he does have a very thin frame, and I wondered whether it genuinely was because he has less muscle in his back than me that made it easier for him to get his arms behind him, or whether it was just the fact that he's practiced this an awful lot that means he can get his arms behind him pretty comfortably. But I realized the way that I was going to need to do it was by bending my arms and leaning further and further forward so my arms were essentially lower down. And because of this, I decided to get rid of the cushions that I was sitting on because I didn't need that little bit of extra height if I was just going to be leaning forward anyway. And I continued to play around with what felt comfortable. So I tried the stool further away, the stool closer. I tried tilting my back really far forward to see if that helped. But no matter what I did, my arms and my back started to ache after every time I played the piece. But once I'd settled on the fact that I needed to bend my arms and lean further forward, I was able to get quite a bit of practice in playing Fur Elise. We're actually getting somewhere now. And the main part that everyone recognises of Fur Elise was starting to come together. I was starting to be able to judge the jumps on the piano. Because obviously I am looking the other way and can't really see what my hands are doing, you're relying quite a lot on how the piano feels and if you have to jump around, you're relying on your judgement of where the keys might be. But the middle section of Fur Elise, which is the bit that I was least familiar with, also happens to be the section that has the most jumps in it. So this was now the section that was the biggest problem. But as I was slowly going more and more insane throughout this session, I had developed a tactic so that I could keep playing without aching too much and that was to play the piece once and then rest for a couple of minutes and then play it again and then rest for a couple of minutes. As long as I was playing for two minutes and then resting for two minutes and I accepted that I was going to be in pain, then I could start to get somewhere. I was also taking occasional breaks so that I could play it facing forward. And I also decided to try and attempt playing it upside down because this is something else that Jason Lyle Black does. And I was curious to see if that would be easier because it seemed like it probably would be. And no, it was just as terrible. So once again, I decided to leave it for the day and come back tomorrow and see if I could finally get this piece done. If you play piano, I urge you to try this and realize how difficult it actually is. We are back for session three. At the start of session number three, I came back and was trying to play it and I was making kind of the same mistakes that I've been making before. I was struggling getting my fingers to not hit the other keys because my arms and fingers were constantly wanting to drop and I was having to fight against that. So my fingers that weren't supposed to be playing were occasionally hitting keys that I didn't want them to. But I came into this session fresh with the same structure that I had before, which was to play for two minutes and then rest for two minutes. <laughs> and hopefully my back and arms weren't going to fatigue so fast if I did this from the very start of the session. I also started to realise that because this piece is very much right hand playing, then left hand playing, then right hand playing, then left hand playing, if I sort of lean my back to one side, it kind of hurts my arms less if I lean my back to one side, then it became a lot easier to play the hand that was supposed to be playing. But I also couldn't lean too much because then my other hand would fall off the piano and I wouldn't be able to find the keys. But still, at this point, almost six hours into trying to learn to play the piano backwards, which is a pretty pointless skill, I might add, I was definitely starting to question my life choices and whether I'd actually ever get to the end of this because it still felt like I was making the same mistakes hitting keys I wasn't supposed to, and missing jumps on the piano that I practiced over and over and over again. I kept on stretching to try and get more mobility in my back. I was still testing, leaning further forwards, tilting my back, playing for two minutes, resting for two minutes. Occasionally playing it forward, going more and more insane, and then this happened.
I think that's as good as we're going to get. And I'd now like to go and learn a skill that isn't pointless. So what have I learned from doing this? Well, playing piano backwards is a skill and it's very difficult to do, but it's also a pointless skill. And I should probably stop doing stupid challenges for YouTube videos. As I said when I was practicing, if you play the piano, go and try this. It is much harder than you think it's going to be. And it's not for the reasons that you think it's going to be difficult, which is your hands doing the opposite things and having to memorize the music. What makes it so difficult is the fact that your arms just clearly aren't meant to go backwards. And so there's a real mobility issue. Or maybe that's just me. If you do try this, let me know in the comments if you had that same issue. And if you want to see me do a much more reasonable challenge, which is to learn six iconic TV themes by ear in just 30 minutes, then check out this video and I will see you there.